everyone and welcome back to my subscribers. If you're not already a subscriber, I'll put a link here for you. And please don't forget to like and share the video. It really helps with the ratings. I've got a really odd gun to show you today. It's a Deltonix 45, and I'm told at one time this was the smallest 1911 produced. This one actually was a trophy given out at the Steel Challenge 2005 by a friend of mine who loaned me the gun, and it's uh, he's held on to it since then. It's really odd. I mean, it has a very short sight radius, and the slide is, or the, the top of the slide has been relieved back here, and it has the old style, I guess, hammer spur like a 1911, but there's not much there, like the GI version. As you can see on the back, there's not much for beaver tail. In fact, it doesn't even work. It's just kind of there for looks. And then we have a standard size of back strap or mainspring housing. The magazine capacity is only six rounds, so there's not much there. Um, as you can tell in my hands, you know, I'm missing a little bit down here at the bottom. You can run eight round or 10 round mags in this thing, but you know, they're going to hang out the bottom. You know, this was made for concealed carry. From Deltonix, I understand that they kind of go into bankruptcy or something or just kind of get sold every couple of years and just reemerge somewhere else. I don't quite understand <laughs> the story behind that, but the gun itself, you know, that's what I wanted to show you here. I'm told that this relief up here is for people that didn't want to carry uh, cocked and locked. They could carry it with the hammer down. And I wouldn't recommend that because you're basically resting the hammer on the firing pin, but some people wanted to carry like that. So upon your draw, you would pull up your weak hand and you would cock it like so. So you could drag your thumb across the top of the slide and activate or cock the hammer and then you could shoot. Kind of an odd concept, but you know somebody out there must have liked it or thought about it. It only has one safety on one side. You know, it's a single-sided safety. Even with the short sight radius, I was able to hit targets fairly well. They're kind of crude, if you ask me. They're real fat, they're not very small, but I was able to go at the plate rack pretty nice with it. I had limited misses, but not too awful many. Trigger pull is really good. It's your, it's, it feels pretty good for a 1911. There's nothing fancy about it, but there's nothing totally gross about it either. To take this apart, it's just like any other 1911. We'll pull it back, pop this open, pry that up, and then we'll slide that off. Put this frame aside, and then our recoil guide rod is a really odd one. It's not typical for what you would see. It's almost like they've taken the base of the recoil guide rod and specially designed it here. I mean, well, it is specially designed. There's no other way of saying it. But it, it fits over the barrel lug and the ramp just so. And then the lug was able to wiggle in there. So to take that out, we're just gonna pull forward a little bit and then up. And that should pull it right out of the gun. So we'll set this down for a second and look at the guide rod again. So there's at least three springs in there, a big one, medium, and a small one that I can see. But there's our their end. It looks like it would wear down pretty, pretty fast upon shooting. And then the front is all screwed together here, so I'm not going to take this apart. But this is our recoil assembly, if you will. And then we'll take the barrel out. comes out through the front. There's no bushing on this. It's just a bull barrel. It's not much of a barrel either. I mean, there's very very limited length on that but like I said surprisingly I was able to clean the plate rack pretty well this is a series 70 so there's it doesn't have the safety mechanisms in the back here if you're not sure what that is I'll put a link to a video on how to uh, remove the firing pin and such and it kind of goes over the series 70 and series 80 and I'll also put a link here for you so you can see the bypassing of the series 80 if you decide to do that bypassing the series 80 is supposed to help you get a better trigger pull from your 1911, but you do take some risk when you bypass safeties. Putting this thing back together, really simple. Take our assembly, put it on there like so. Make sure we get that lined up the way it is. And then we'll take our frame, just your basic Series 70 frame that's been chopped down. And then slide it on. Make sure we get everything lined up inside there. With our barrel lug. 
and that's it. Oops, something didn't work right with our, I missed the barrel lug. There we go. Let's try that one more time. There we go. But that's the Dell Tonics. 1911 world's smallest 1911 at some time or another well thanks for watching and please subscribe for more competition shooting and gun reviews thanks